السلام علیکم ڈاکٹر ذاکر نائک وعلیکم السلام ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ مائی نیم از محمد عبد اللہ فرام نائجیریا آئی ایم اے اسٹوڈنٹ دیر واز اے ویڈیو آف یو وچ آئی واشڈ ویئر یو آر ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ ہاؤ کرسچن مشنریز یوز دا واس آف دا ہولی قرآن ٹو کنفیوز مسلمس فار ایگزامپل دے آس کوشچن لائک ہو از گریٹر بٹوین پروفیٹ ایسا that was born miraculously and Prophet Muhammad peace be upon them that was born like a normal human being and also Prophet Muhammad died like a normal human being while Isa a.s. was raised up alive by Allah please I need an answer on how to reply to all these questions please thank you and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and your family What the brother asked a question is referring to a talk of mine which he saw on video, Dawa or Destruction, where I mentioned how do the Christian missionaries, they attack the Muslims, how did they use the Quran and the information that we have in the Hadith to attack the Muslims. And I gave five examples in this lecture of mine. And I say that these Christian missionaries, they come and ask the Muslim that doesn't the Quran say that Bible is the word of God? And the Muslim says, yes. Then they ask the next question. Why don't you follow the Bible? And we Muslims cannot reply. They ask the next question. That, did your Prophet, last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did he have a mother and father? And we say, yes, he had a mother and father. <coughs> they ask the next question. Did Isa alayhi salam, Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, did he have a mother and father? And we have to agree. He had a mother, but he had no father. So who's greater? A person who has a father is greater or a person who's born without a father is greater. They ask this question, but they don't give you the reply. They let your mind think. They ask the next question. That your prophet, Muhammad, peace be upon him, did he give life to the dead? And we have to agree, yes, he had done many miracles, but we don't know of any miracle in which prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, gave life to the dead. They ask the next question. That did Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him. Did he give life to the dead? And we have to say yes. The Quran says, Be is Nillah. We wake up in the name of Allah. He gave life to the dead. So who's greater? A person who can give life to the dead is greater or a person who cannot give life to the dead is greater? They ask you the question. They don't give you the reply. They let your mind think. They ask the next question. That how many times this Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, mentioned by name in the Quran? And if you don't know, they will tell you, He's mentioned five times by name. Four as Muhammad and one as Ahmad sallallahu alayhi wa How many times is Prophet Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, mentioned by name in the Quran? And if you don't know, they tell you, he's mentioned 25 times by name. So who's greater? A person who's mentioned five times by name is greater or a person who's mentioned 25 times by name is greater? They ask you the question, but they don't give you the reply. They let your mind think. They ask the next question. That is your Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is he physically dead or alive? You have to agree that spiritually he's alive, but physically he's dead. He's buried in Medina. Is Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, is he physically dead or alive? And we have to agree that he did not die. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised him up alive. So who's greater? A prophet who's dead is greater or a prophet who's alive is greater? They ask these questions and they confuse the Muslims and they let your mind think. These are the five examples I gave in the talk of mine. Dawa or destruction and I'll give the reply to them and there are many more if you go to the Dawa training program you go to the platform in there I've given many examples many more questions that the Christian missionaries pose to attack the Muslims and how we Muslims should reply as far as this question is concerned I will reply to these five questions the first is when the Christian missionary asks that isn't it mentioned in the Quran that Bible is the word of God? Our reply should be no. Nowhere does the Quran say Bible is the word of God. What the Quran says is Injil is the Wahi, the revelation which was given to Isa by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the present Bible is not the Wahi, is not the Injil which was given to Isa salam. The present Bible is a mixture. It contains the word of God. It contains the word of prophet, it contains the word of historian, it even contains, I'm sorry to say, pornography. So the present Bible is not the word of God at all. It is a mixture. It may contain the word of God. 
So that is the reason we Muslims don't believe in it. What we Muslims believe is in Injil, the Wahi, which was revealed to Isa alayhi salam. And that Wahi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not think it fit to preserve. Because another revelation came, the Quran came. Quran is the last and final revelation, and Allah takes it upon Himself in Surah Hijr, chapter number 15, verse number 9, that we have revealed the Quran and we shall guard it from corruption. So, because Quran was the last and final revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which was revealed to the last and final messenger, Allah took it upon Himself to see to it that He will preserve it and He will guard it from all corruption. So, number one, Bible is not the word of God. Bible is not the Injil which is mentioned in the Quran. What we believe is in the Injil, the Wahi which was given to Isa alayhi salam, and the present Bible is not that Wahi. Therefore, we don't believe in it. Number two, that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he had a mother and father, he was born naturally. Isa alayhi salam, he had a mother, but he, he had no father. He was born miraculously. So who's greater? A person who's born with a father is greater or a person who's born without a father is greater? The reply to this question is given in the glorious Quran in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 59, where Allah says, Inna masala Isa in the lahi kamasila Adam. Khalaqa min turab, summa qala lokun fayakun. The similitude of Isa alayhi salam, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, in front of Allah is the same as Adam peace be upon him. He was created from dust and it was said be and it was. So here Allah is telling that the similitude, the example of Isa alayhi salam is the same as Adam peace be upon him. Adam was created from dust and said be and it was. If you say that Prophet Jesus is Almighty God because he had no father, then Prophet Adam knows Billah becomes a greater God. Because they had no father and no mother. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, at least had a mother. And the Christian missionary will, you have to ask the Christian missionary, even the Bible says that, that Adam, peace be upon him, had no mother and father. So would you say that Adam is a greater God than Jesus, peace be upon him? And the answer is no. So for replying, we have to use their scriptures. Talo ila kalimatin sawa in bayna baynakum. Come to common terms as between us and you. Which is the first term, Allah, na'buda illa Allah. That we worship none but Allah. That we associate no partners with Him. This is mentioned in Surah Imran, chapter 3, verse 64. So, this is the third, this is the second question that a Christian missionary poses. As far as the third question is concerned, that Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, he gave life to the dead. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did not, did not give life to the dead. So who's greater? A person who can give life to the dead or a person who cannot give life to the dead? All the miracles that were done by the prophets were done by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all the miracles were done by Almighty God. So the credit goes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not to the messenger. But yet if the, if the Christian missionary, no, 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 Isa alayhi salam is a greater God because he gave life to the dead. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam did not give life to the dead, therefore he... He is not greater than Isa alayhi salam. For sake of argument, you say that if you agree that giving life to the dead makes you a greater God, then Musa alayhi salam not only gave life to the dead, but he converted a stick from a plant kingdom to a snake to an animal kingdom. That means he is a greater God. He, not, he threw the staff, his stick, and the staff became a snake. So number one, he is giving life to the stick. Number two, he is changing from a plant kingdom to an animal kingdom. That's a greater miracle. Giving life to the dead, a human being, is a miracle. But when you throw a staff, a dead thing becomes life. And changing from a plant kingdom to animal, that's a greater miracle. So would you say that Musa is a greater God? Other Christian missionaries say no. This also mentioned in the Bible. As far as the fourth question is concerned, they will ask that Isa salam is mentioned in the Quran by name 25 times. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi only 5 times. So who's greater? And I gave this reply in my early question that number of times being mentioned by name doesn't make a person greater. And when the Quran was being revealed, Muhammad sallallahu was present. 
So when the Quran has to speak about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, since he was present, his name need not be taken. Either the Di, Dao, Ya Nabi, Ya Rasul, no problem. But if you have to talk about someone who is not present, to initiate the discussion about him, it's compulsory you have to take his name first and then you can say he or thou or then. So because Isa a.s. wasn't present when the Quran was being revealed, whenever an example of Isa a.s. is given, his name had to be taken. And Isa a.s. is mentioned 25 times by name in the Quran. So that is the number of times that he has been, he has been referred. But that doesn't make him a greater God. Because Muhammad was present. You can address him as thee, thou, ya nabi, O Prophet. So that's the reason just because a person is mentioned more number of time doesn't make him a greater God. If this is the argument, then in the Quran, Musa is mentioned by name 132 times. Does it mean that he is a greater God than Isa And the answer is no. The last question. So the fifth question that they ask is that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, physically is dead. He had natural death. But Isa alayhi salam, is he dead or alive? And we have to agree that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised him up alive. Allah says this Surah Nisa chapter 4, 157, 158. He was not killed, not were he crucified, but we raised him up unto myself. That means Isa alayhi salam was raised up alive by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So who's dead? A person who's dead, a person who's alive. What you have to understand that all the messengers that came of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right from Adam to Salam till Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, all of them they were successful in delivering the message to their followers. And when they departed from this earth, the followers testified that they believe that this person was the messenger of God and they won Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No. The question in Christianity is that Isa alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam, he was considered as an imposter by the Jews. He was not considered to be a messenger. So because of that, he, he was maligned. And Allah, he was the only messenger amongst all the messengers and prophets that came on the face of the earth whose followers as a whole did not accept him as a messenger. Some of them believed him as God. Some of them believed in him as an imposter. So, he is the only messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who as a whole, the people did not believe he is a messenger of God. That is the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says in the Quran in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, 157, that وَمَا قَتُلُوا وَمَا صَلُوبُوا وَلَا أَشُبْ بِيَلَوْهُ He was not killed, nor were he crucified, he was made to appear so. And, and it says that anyone who differs is full of doubt, إِلَّا تِبَا ذَن with only conjectures to follow. وَمَا وَمَا قَتُلُوا يَقِينَ For a surety they killed him not. Now what you have to understand that why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise him up alive? Because Allah rose him, up, rose him up alive so that in his second coming he could testify that he never claimed divinity. As far as Muhammad was concerned, all his followers believed that he was a messenger of God. All of them believed that, that he was a human being, he was not God. So because there is no confusion, but in terms of Isa alayhi salam, many people thought that he was almighty God. It was a misconception. So that's the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised him up alive and took him unto himself so that in the second coming he can testify to the Christians that he never claimed divinity. He never said that he was Almighty God. But he said that Rabbi wa Rabbukum, worship Allah who is your Lord and my Lord. The main purpose was, the main purpose was that to he, because his followers did not accept him as a messenger as a whole, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised him up alive so that in the second coming he will testify to the Christians he never claimed divinity. So that's the reason Allah raised him up alive. So this was in short the reply to the five questions I say in my lecture of Dawa or destruction. But if you go to my Dawa training, if you go to the section of Christianity, mashallah there you will find that there were many other ways how Christian missionary attack Muslims and how should we Muslims reply.
Hope that's the question.